Hey everybody, it's Kevin Esty from Stamping Just for Fun. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located on the east coast of Canada in Upper Tan Talon, Nova Scotia, just around the corner from Peggy's Cove. And uh, today I was just playing around and wanting to do a little bit of uh, Christmas decorating. And I thought I would share this nifty, simple little project with you. This one's not fully embellished yet, um, but this is a, a luminary. Uh, it's a very, very simple to put together project, a uh, little box with a lid, and it's got some uh, punched shapes on it. And this one I lined with a piece of the um, mercury paper acetate. But the idea being is that you take this with a little uh, battery operated tea light and you just set the tea light down on the table. You put this over top of the tea light and it makes a little luminary. Uh, there, you can kind of see that. And you get a little bit of light that comes through it. I had made some of these earlier this year uh, with uh, the Magnolia Lane Memory and More card pack. And I'm going to show you what comes in that pack in a minute. This one's been decorated up a little bit. And this package had some vellum sheets in it that were printed with um, a leaf pattern. And so I used that vellum, and the vellum gives a much softer glow inside. Uh, it obscures the candle and gives it a softer glow. But uh, these are so easy to put together and uh, all the parts and pieces come out of that memory and more card kit. I'll show you that now. Um, they are still available. It was a set of, I think it was 50, 52 or 58 cards. You get some large 4x6 cards and uh, all our memory and more card packs are pre-printed. Uh, with various images according to whatever the theme is, double-sided. And they're meant just to be stuck right on the front of the um, 4x6 card bases and envelopes that come as a separate item. But you can see there's lots of lots of flowers in there that could be cut out and used. Um, I use some from the little ones here. Uh, I cut out some of these little magnolias. And even if they went off the corner, um, it's not this particular card, but you can see, very similar, this was another card, uh, and I colored in the leaves, and I just put it off on the corner. Um, there's one I cut up, obviously that was one I took the magnolias from. Yeah, I would say, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> uh, there's another example of one that could come off of a corner, there are some full ones. Um, and, as I said, in that pack, there were some sheets of vellum. This was a lovely memory in Moore's pack. Um, flowers. Uh, this one was kind of a border piece. Uh, larger flowers. Smaller flowers. Uh, I chose the leaf one because I only had small window in my uh, uh, luminary, and I just I wanted the the candle to show through. There were also stickers in this package. And I did use some of the stickers to uh, embellish here and there. And I layered them up on some dimensionals just to give some depth. And I added some pearls. So that was where I got the inspiration for this project from today. It was sitting on my desk. And I thought, wouldn't that look great done in a Christmas theme? So this was my first attempt at it. And uh, I thought, you know what? Rather than get my die cutting machine out and have to crank a bunch of dies through, I've got all these neat punches. And uh, from the brightly gleaming set, there were the two, um, I guess, bauble or ornament punches. Uh, the moose set, uh, he's no longer available, which is a shame, but um, they're going to try to bring him back for uh, next Christmas, which is fabulous. Um, the the Merry Moose, really like that one. And this is from the plaid set, the pine tree from the plaid set. So I thought, why not use punches that I have? And if you have punches, you could use any kind of a Christmas punch or whatever. And the great thing about using punches are when you go to do your punching, you can slide it all the way in while it's flat. And you know that your images are going to be roughly where you want them to be around the, the outside. So let's get started real simple directions here. I'm, go I'm going to do two. So I took uh, a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock and I cut it the long way down the middle at four and a quarter. So we have a piece that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. 
I also have a piece of uh, coordinating designer series paper from the Brightly Gleaming. Uh, this is Night of Navy that matches this. This second one we're going to do is the Pretty Peacock, and that's the foil uh, embossed paper that comes in the Brightly Gleaming. These measure four and five eighths square. So four and five eighths by four and five eighths. Those are going to make our lids. Then I took a uh, two and a half inch strip off of my 12 by 12 piece of uh, the um, uh, mercury glass acetate paper and I'm going to use that to cover the windows in one and I also took a two and a half inch strip off of an eight and a half by eleven piece of the vellum cardstock that we have and yes it's a little bit shorter but that's okay um, you can still divide it into four pieces and you'll have enough to cover your window just make sure uh, that whatever punches you're using um, that you have enough to, to cover the hole by a little bit of overlap on all four edges. Uh, our punches all come in a pretty standard size and the hole in the middle is uh, two and a half, in, uh, two and a half? Yeah, I think it's two and a half or two and three quarters. So th they should all work. But if you don't have Stampin' Up! punches, I uh, won't guarantee. Measure first to make sure. So let's start first with a card base call it a card base it's not going to be a card and I'm only going to give you one measurement to remember okay this is real easy all you have to do is remember two and five eighths it's that simple so two and five eighths two and a half is four eighths right because four is half of eight and one more eighth so two and five eighths and I'm going to score and I said only one measurement because all I'm going to do is move my scored line over to two and five eighths and I'm going to score again because we're making a square box. They're all going to be two and five eighths. And there are going to be four of them. So two and five eighths. And what that does is it leaves us a little tab over here on the side, which measures uh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five eighths, <laughs> of course. So two and five eighths, two and five eighths, two and five eighths, two and five eighths, and five eighths left over. Okay. Then we take our punches. I think I'm going to be, when I did my sample, I did all four different punches to see what I like. And I really like the Christmas tree. So I think I'm just gonna decorate this one as Christmas trees. So all I do is center my punch between the two score lines. And punch there, and there, and there. And then this one, it's going to be the score line and the edge of the paper. That's it. Look, how much easier could this be? Okay. Then I'm going to flip it over from where I did my score lines, because, of course, we're going to fold away from the score. And I'm going to do my... I think I'll do the uh, vellum on this one. So this is a, a, a from an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So it's 11 inches long. So I know that five and a half is the middle. So I'm going to cut it in the middle. And I know that two and three quarters is, is it two and three quarters? Yeah, it's two and three quarters is the middle of that. So there I have my four pieces of vellum. These should fit, they do, over my Christmas trees. Okay. All I have to do, find my glue, is just put a little line of glue around the outside. Just glue those down so that they cover my trees. They don't have to be real pretty because nobody's going to see the inside of this. There's a lid on it. That's why we made a lid. Okay. Just put some glue on. I apologize if there is a bit of some shadows and whatnot going on here in my video today. It is <laughs> pouring snow outside right now. Um, no, there is a, it's quite dark out and my windows next to me here aren't as bright as they usually are. So you're getting my overhead light today. But we are finally getting some Christmas snow here. Great big flakes 
and it's starting to pile up in the trees outside. It looks ever so pretty. Christmas is coming right down the pipes rather quickly. And what better time to make some nice Christmas decorations. I'm going to make probably five or six of these and they're going to be lined up on my mantle. I may, you, know, you could use them for um, uh, your Christmas dining table. You could uh, put them on your coffee tables. In fact, you can actually send these to somebody as a card. And I'll show you that in just a second. So then we just fold this up. You don't even have to score with a bone folder or anything like that. Relatively straightforward and simple. Okay, we'll put some glue on our flap. A real simple way to do this. Don't try to do this. Just lay it flat. Fold the flap over and stick it to itself. When you're doing things that are symmetrical, all the same on all sides and whatnot, you can often do that. Now, this is why I said you could mail this. You can't mail the tea light with it, but everybody can get a tea light. But you could fold this up and slide it in an envelope and send it as a card, even embellished with a little bit of stuff. So there, we have our basic shape. Put the little candle in here. and that nice? See how it comes through there and it flickers. It's going to be so pretty. Okay. And let's make the top. So this was our coordinating top piece that was cut from the Brightly Gleaming DSP. Again, the 5 8 So it's 4 and 5 8 by 4 and 5 8 And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the 1 inch mark here on the right. And I'm going to score. I'm going to rotate it to 1 inch. I'm going to score. I'm going to rotate it again. So I'm scoring on all four sides at 1 inch. There we go. That's the end of that. Then we're going to make a very simple box. So all we have to do is cut in straight and then I'm just going to wedge this on both sides a little bit. It just makes it easier for folding and gluing later. And then I'm going to rotate do the same thing. My first cut's going to be straight because I want the edge the top edge of my box to be straight, but my flap that's going to fold in gets wedged just a little bit. Okay. Rotate again. Wedge that one. There we go. And rotate again. There we go. Okay. Then, it's just a matter of folding everything up along those lines, like that, and we put some glue on each of the tabs. Just remember, because you wedged, you have to line your outside edge up. If I push push in too hard, it's going to be crooked because I've cut the wedge off of my tab over here. So I'm only going in and I'm lining the edge of my paper up with the folded corner. Make it as square as possible. Now, I'm also only going to do... No, actually, I'll do them all. I was going to say I was only going to do two, and then I was going to put my box around it, but I'm liable to get glue on my box. I'm just being careful not to make it too tight, because if you make it too tight, it's not going to fit on the top of your box. So don't go too, too tight with your corners. But you don't want to go real loose either, because then your top won't fit. Okay. And then I am just going to go with my bone folder and sort of crease from inside here. I'm going to crease the, the corners just to make sure the corners are nice and crisp. 
There we go. So, if I've done this properly, this should fit pretty darn tight. And if you have to, you can pucker one edge just to get it to go in. There we go. Okay, and then it will relax a little bit. And it will stay. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Okay, now we're going to do some embellishing on here. Part of that brightly gleaming suite were some um, stars. There were some fabulous little uh, copper... I'm over here copper foil sheets that had die cut uh, images on them that you could just punch out all stuck together here now so there were some sprigs some ornaments and a couple of stars and we're going to get into these these out and I'm also going to go to my box of goodies here. We might want to use some of these uh, holiday rhinestones or basic rhinestones. Mm, those are kind of more gold than copper. I don't know that we ever had copper sequins. Uh, no, I don't think I want to use pearls or anything. No, I think that'll do. That, that's, that's enough to, to uh, keep us busy here. So let's do uh, let me see. How do we want to do this? Maybe just layered. Hanging over the corner. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue up here in the corner. Yeah, I like that. Stay up here in the camera. Go off the edge of the table. Nobody will be able to see me. You get the general just an idea here. And then I have my go-to goodie box that I always go to that is full of tags and things left over from paper pumpkin kits. And, you know, when I'm making flags, I make a hundred of them. Uh, there is bound to be something in here that we can use. Oh, look, all kinds of stuff left over from tags and things I was making for Christmas. Merry and bright. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that. Red. May your season be merry and bright. Maybe we put that on one of these sides. Or what do we got? Jingle all the way. I know there's some blue ones in here. Here we go. Heaven and nature sing. Uh, holly jolly, peace and joy. Yeah. Or I can flip one over and... Although I like that merry and bright one. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to put that up on a, uh, a dimensional. Like that. That's going to go right there on this side. 
And then maybe we'll finish that off with uh, some ribbon. Now, I want to put a bow on the top. And this was the ribbon that came with um, the Brightly Gleaming set. And it's got uh, me Merry Christmas. Oh. If you want to explain to me an easy way to get the plastic off the ribbon, I will happily listen. There we go. Uh, it's got Merry Christmas embossed in the copper foil on it. And what I thought I'd like to do is put a, a bow on the top and then wrap it underneath of the lid. But I just kind of, yeah, I've glued things on here now. I'm not going to be able to wrap it under the lid, but that's okay. We can still make a bow and we can stick it on the top. So here go my fabulous bow making skills, not, I usually use a bow tying tool because I never seem to be able to manage, there we go, I actually did, <laughs> my word, the Chris Christmas miracle, um, never seemed to manage to get my bows to come out in the right direction so that they look like a bow. They usually look like somebody just took a bunch of ribbon and pulled it into knots. Okay. That's actually coming together not too bad. <laughs> if I could just get it tight in the middle. Okay, there we go. That's, that's enough to... To accomplish what I wanted to call. I didn't want to cut it in the middle of a Merry Christmas, but I guess it doesn't matter. Gonna have to. Okay, and then I'm going to use a dimensional piece on the back to stick it on the top. Because I want it to stick well and glue is not going to work. There we go. So I'm going to have that on the top. I'm going to finish adding some more embellishments and whatnot to it. And put my candle in them. It's just that simple. That's all you do is you just put your candle down and put it over top of your candle. And they're really nice. Really, really nice. Okay. In case you missed that at the beginning, let's do another one real quick. I'm not going to embellish and decorate it all, but I just wanted to show you again how real simple this was. So, a standard piece of cardstock cut in half so that it's four and a quarter inches by 11. And then we're going to score, and all you have to remember is two and five eighths. And then slide your score line over to two and five eighths and do the next one. And slide that one over to two and five eighths and do the next one. You do that four times. Okay, that's that. May as well do this one while we're here. This is a piece of designer series paper that's four and five eighths by four and five eighths. And we're going to do that one at an inch all the way around the outside, all four sides. And this makes the lid of your box. Okay. There we go. Scoring and everything complete. Then we take our punch. I'm going to do the mousse for this one. And you slide it in and just line it up right between the two marks. And you do that four times. And this last one, you use the edge and your last score line as your mark. Okay, that's that. And then you can have some fun, use these on cards later. Then we flip it over, and I have my piece of um, mercury acetate, and it measured 12 inches long because it was a 12 by 12 inch sheet, so I'm just going to cut that in half at six, and I'm going to cut each one of those in half at three. My first one, I used a piece of the vellum paper, which was only 11 inches, so I cut it in half at five and a half, and then cut those in half at two and three quarters, and they were perfectly fine. Uh, this 
acetate paper has on one side of it somewhere. It really doesn't matter. It has no effect for this, but there is a plastic protection on it. There. Sometimes you can just see it bubbled. It, uh, it just protects it when, when it's in the package, and you can get rid of that extra piece of plastic. Uh, it, like I say, it really doesn't matter for something like this because it's such a small piece. But if this is going to go on the front of the card, it just it makes it really shiny on that one particular side. So I'm only going to do the, the one. I'm not concerned about the other ones. It's not like it's not going to let it stick to the card. Adhering this with a little bit of liquid glue. On the outside. Like that. On each of my four panels. Just be careful to keep them between the, the folds. You can see your score lines on there easily enough. Oh, look, that one's actually going to peel off. While I'm doing this, I think this is my fifth Gentleman Crafters blog hop. And as always, I will be doing a draw from everybody who joins my newsletter while watching this video on my blog. And last month, you will remember I did these little calendar caddies. And I drew for a couple of project kits to make calendar caddies. And I am happy to say that Betty Osteen of Wash, uh, sorry, Eatonton, Georgia, has won one. And Linda Granger of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, just around the corner from where I live here, has won the other one. And those are going in the mail today. Uh, I hope you get them in time for Christmas, but you'll certainly have them in time for the new year. And you can put those together. I'll be doing the draw for uh, a couple of luminary kits, and it'll probably be these two that I've made here uh, from all of the people who subscribe. Uh, that will be closer to the end of uh, December, and those will go out the first week of January to two winners. And you can have them for next Christmas. But more importantly, you have them as, a, as an outline for a project that maybe you could do a class or something with. And they don't just have to be Christmas. As you saw, I did one with the... Uh, uh, I was just going to call it marigolds. Um, magnolias. Okay. So you could do anything. Uh, we have a beautiful new tulip punch that, if done right, maybe could do uh, punch tulips. So there, we have our moose. Now we're going to make our lid. I already scored that at one inch all the way around the outside. So my first one I cut straight and then I wedge like that. Rotate straight and then wedge straight and wedge and the last one. go and we just fold everything up cut put some glue on the flaps these go together so quickly the uh, longest Thing is figuring out how to embellish them, what uh, what tag you want to stamp and put on, what ribbon and 
rhinestones and things you want to put on the outside of them. But these would make great little um, place markers for a banquet, uh, a wedding, if you did them in white cardstock, uh, if you'd embellished them with um, some of our frosty sparkle paper, um, you could do, uh, well, I'm doing the copper elements just because the bright Lagini paper has the copper foil and whatnot, but you could easily do silver or gold uh, for a 50th anniversary or a uh, 20, 20, 25th anniversary, silver or gold anniversary. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, there we are. And when you put the candle inside, yeah, the mercury glass doesn't obscure the candle like the vellum does, which is why I kind of maybe prefer the vellum. It gives a much softer glow. Uh, you can see through, but it's kind of cool in the dark. This really lights up nice. Now, I said that without the lid on it, you could very easily pop this into an envelope. And if you do your embellishing correctly, they do fold flat. It's the lid that can be the problem. But if you're very careful and you hold it by the corners like this and you push in the middle, you can actually fold and crease those two corners and your lid will also fold flat and go in the envelope with your luminary. So you can mail these to people. You just have to put a little note inside to explain when they open it up they, that they pop the lid open and put the lid on the top and then they have to get a tea light to put inside. So that's my project for today. Uh, I hope that you like that. I hope that you will uh, subscribe at my website. Uh, if you're seeing this video on YouTube, follow the link over to my website, which is stampingjustforfun.ca. And uh, subscribe to my newsletter over there, and I will put you into a draw to win one of these luminaries. I will put all of the uh, measurements and instructions up on my blog post, and I hope to see you all again next month for the next Gentleman Crafters blog hop. You have a great day, a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, we'll see you soon.